Hi guys, happy new year. 2020, crazy. How did that happen? Last year just flew by. Say that every year, but last year really did. I hope you all had a lovely holiday season and so far this year has treated you well. In my last video I mentioned I would film a Q&A for you guys and a few of you left questions on that video and a few days ago I also asked on Instagram if any of you had any questions so I'm going to answer those questions. Today is the 14th of January and this week is our week of appointments. So we've got five more appointments left between us so Tim and I and our friends, um, friend who's offered to be our gestational surrogate. So it's exciting this week to get things done and tick all the boxes. We haven't had any appointments and nothing's really been going on since our last appointment in December last year before Christmas. So yeah, this week things will start moving again, which is exciting. Last year we were blessed to create two PGS normal embryos, which we are hoping to use for gestational surrogacy. The embryos are both genetically mine and Tim's. We will be transferring one embryo at a time. So quite a few questions, I'll jump right in and answer them as quickly as possible. First question is, do you plan on introducing your surrogate to your online community? That is obviously a joint decision with her and your partners. Yes, we have discussed that in our group counselling session. They are open to their identities being revealed and to being a part of documenting this journey. They know that we have been documenting this journey for the last... Mm three and a half years they're definitely open to that uh, of course if that changes down the line we will respect that decision um, but for now all parties are willing to continue sharing it's going to be quite the experience and interesting to share the gestational surrogacy experience from my perspective, Tim's perspective and the perspective of our gestational surrogate and even her partner. We are hoping to document the journey on YouTube so that's the plan for now. Next question is will you share updates such as when transfers are, positive pregnancy tests, beta, HCGs etc the way you did when it was with you? I think we probably will. Um, the positive pregnancy tests, hopefully, and the beta H HCGs will probably not be straight away. Obviously, we will need a few days to process whatever the result may be and um, play it by ear a little bit, but definitely planning on sharing with you guys this whole journey. So yeah, it will be a similar process than if it was me transferring the embryo. Again, whatever my friend is comfortable with is what we'll do. Next question is do you plan on transferring both PGS normal embryos at the same time? I've already mentioned that we won't be uh, and if not is your surrogate able to be a surrogate more often than once? Yes surrogates are able to do it more than once. Uh, I don't believe there's any limit to embryo transfers. Obviously we don't have 20 embryos frozen and of course it all comes down to what our friend is willing to do. I mean I think we'll just cross that bridge when we get to it. Hopefully we won't have to cross that bridge and hopefully at least one of our PGS tested embryos will stick and be a healthy pregnancy grow into a healthy baby but um, yeah definitely we'll just be transferring one embryo at a time. My friend did have a twin pregnancy, a natural twin pregnancy um, and she delivered early so my specialist won't even probably allow multiple embryos to be transferred given her history and the fact that they're PGS tested embryos and she has easily fallen pregnant in the past so um, yes, we will just be transferring one embryo at a time. What sort of costs will you be looking at for surrogacy? Total cost mainly. Um, from off the top of my head, it's around 18,000 with everything added up. Um, that's a rough ballpark. So uh, we've already created the embryos. Um, so that cost isn't included in that. 
we've already created them and paid for those to be created. So the 18,000 covers the external psychologist, the counselling within the fertility clinic, um, admin fees within the fertility clinic, the lawyer appointments for Tim and I, the lawyer appointments for our friends, the embryo transfer to our gestational surrogate, um, possible medications, I don't know what protocol she'll be on, so um, those will be possibly an added expense, uh, but they're the main costs that are involved. So definitely a lot cheaper to do surrogacy here in Australia than it is in the US where it can be, you know, over a hundred thousand. If you aren't as lucky as us and don't have a friend or family member offer to be your surrogate here in Australia uh, because it's illegal to advertise for a surrogate or for surrogacy. Most people in Australia would have to go to places like Canada uh, or overseas where it's over 70,000. So, you know, 18,000 plus the possibly 10,000 we've done IVF cycles last year. You know, it's about 30,000, a fraction of the price of what it would cost to go overseas. So, um, grateful in that respect though some people get their babies for free but let's not go there next question is how many children do you and Tim want if this surrogacy were to be successful would you be one and done or wanting to add I have always wanted to have a big family but obviously the last few years have made me realize not everything goes to plan but you know if we're blessed enough to have one I would love to try for another one um, down the road, obviously we wouldn't probably wait that long. At the beginning of our marriage we had always said we would love to have three children but then reality struck. So I think we'll just be so grateful for whatever comes our way and if we get one, oh my gosh, we have spent the majority of the last almost six years wondering if we will ever have one. So I think we'll definitely play it by ear but we would ideally in a perfect world we would love to have more than one child. Does your surrogate already have children? Yes, she's got three children, all under six and she's a wonder woman. To be offering to do this for us with her hands full and all that she has on her plate, I don't even know how she does it, so <sighs> she's incredible. Next question is, not sure if you want to open up or go there, but what about some of the answers to your psych questions about surrogacy you mentioned? Example, who has the first skin to skin? Will you be formula feeding or breastfeeding the baby? How often will you see your surrogate other than appointments, etc. Don't want to seem to be pushing the boundaries on questions, just very curious and find it interesting. I think it's amazing what you and your friend are doing, um, but would be mentally challenging for a lot of it. Yeah, I think it's a very unique situation and it's bound to be a little bit mentally challenging for all of us involved at different stages in the process. Um, but we are so close already, we're such a, they're such great friends and we see them all the time they live just a few doors down so we're always over there we're doing we do bedtime routines with their children and have known their children since she was pregnant with them seven years ago so you know we're very close as to the psych questions our last appointment in the group session the question about who would have first skin to skin did come up and um, we agreed that it would hopefully be me Tim and I will be in the delivery room and um, the hope is all going well the baby will be transferred to my chest such a surreal thing to imagine and visualize but um, very exciting. Uh, will you be formula feeding or breastfeeding the baby? So this comes up in another question. So I'm hoping to induce lactation. It is something that I've been researching a lot in the last couple of months and it is very exciting that it is a possibility and it can be done uh, even if you haven't given birth. A lot of mothers who adopt their babies and obviously mothers who have surrogacy arrangements 
do induce lactation and there are a number of different things you can do uh, so that is my hope obviously I don't know how that's gonna go what my supply will be like and that kind of thing so we'll have to just play it by ear if we have to supplement with other breast milk, donated breast milk or formula we will obviously do so I know even mothers who give birth to their baby can't necessarily or have trouble breastfeeding and it definitely doesn't work for everyone and some people don't even prefer not to do it which is totally fine fed is best uh, for me because I won't be carrying my baby I feel like breastfeeding is even more important to me it is breastfeeding something I've always felt excited about doing um, feeding my baby I feel like it's such a bonding experience and yeah, it's something I've always found so amazing, incredible that our bodies are able to feed our babies and, you know, nourish them and do all of these incredible things. So because I won't be able to carry my baby, I'm hoping that part of the early stages of motherhood will still be able to be achieved, if that makes sense. Um, but I'll definitely be... Also documenting that journey for inducing lactation because again it's something I've struggled to find a lot of information on on YouTube. I found a few but I feel like it'll be helpful for those who do want to induce lactation for whatever reason. How often will you see your surrogate other than appointments? I kind of already answered that. We're very close friends so we'll be seeing each other very often. I um Obviously, I'll be going to every appointment and being very involved. She will also need time to rest and she's got three children. So I am planning to take over some of her roles. But wherever I can help, I will. Do you have names picked out for your future children? I'm praying for you to get your beautiful miracles. Thank you. Also, if you could take your future children on a dream vacation, money not an object, where would you take them? Gosh. So names, I've had names picked out since I was a child. <laughs> since I was a little girl, I've had a list of names. I did a baby names list, ba 10 baby names I won't be... Oh gosh, 10, the heat is really getting to my head. I did a video on 10 baby names I love but won't be using uh, a few months ago. I'll link it up here. Up here, I don't know where it'll be. My names have definitely, the names I've, I love have definitely evolved over time and new ones I've fallen in love with. Tim and I sometimes have differing opinions on baby names so I think it'll be something we think more about as the months go on. My memory card just ran out so I just have to wipe it. Oh my gosh, I'm so hot. I'm melting. Tim's out in the lounge room watching a James Bond movie eating ice cream. I'm just, it's so hot in this room. If you could take your future children on a dream vacation, where would you go? Uh, gosh, I don't even know. Well, I'm sure my children would love to go to Disneyland one day. So if this vacation is happening when they're old enough to enjoy that, then probably Disneyland. Uh, I've never been to America, so that would be exciting. What an amazing opportunity to come and visit my American friends. Oh, all catch up with our children. That's a dream vacation. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Disneyland, but also, Austria, I would love to take my future children to Austria and show them where some of their family came from. How am I feeling about this upcoming surrogacy transfer? I am feeling a whole range of emotions. I'm feeling hopeful, excited, absolutely terrified to my core. Um... I'm just, this is the most hopeful, I've said it before, this is the most hopeful Tim and I have felt in a very long time and that is scary. Hope, feeling this hopeful, it, it's just, it seems like there'll be a further way to fall if it doesn't work, but we're going to feel just as hurt if it doesn't work, even if we have a different mindset and we don't feel hopeful. So I, 
I'm hoping, I'm trying to, one of my TTC sisters told me the other day I should try and visualise just, you know, like sit the secret style, just visualise good things happening and so I'm going to try and do that but I think whatever works for you, everyone's different, everyone copes in different ways, I am just taking it day by day, baby steps. I think mainly I'm feeling hopeful, um, as scary as that is. When your surrogate is carrying your long-awaited blessing, will you introduce her or show baby bumps, etc. during the nine months? So I kind of already answered this. Uh, she is saying she's happy to be on camera. Uh, if that changes, that, that's completely fine with me. I would love to do little baby bump photos each week. Again, it's whatever she's comfortable with doing. I've seen surrogacy... Can you hear Clover? What's wrong? Can I say hi, sweet girl? Were you on the other side of the door? Huh. Oh my goodness. Okay. I've already kind of addressed this, but... I, I recently read that some adopting mothers use induced lactation to be able to breastfeed their babies and was wondering if that's on the table for you or something you've been planning to do if surrogacy works out as planned. No second thoughts here, asking this question, just generally, cu genuinely curious if that's something you would think about. Um, so yeah, I've already said yes, I will definitely be looking into doing induced lactation and giving it a go. Um, I'm hoping to start inducing lactation or getting the process started a number of months before the baby is due and hoping to just increase my supply and hopefully have some breast milk frozen before baby arrives so I can, if I'm not supplying enough, I can always supplement with breast milk I have pre-expressed. Uh, if that makes sense. So we're looking at getting a chest freezer uh, because breast milk keeps for longer in a chest freezer than a regular freezer for six months longer. So breast milk keeps in a chest freezer for 12 months as opposed to six months in a regular freezer. Um, it all depends on what happens. Everyone's breastfeeding journey is different but they also say the baby's suck I guess is always going to induce milk more than a breast pump but I have got my eye on a hospital grade breast pump um it's the what's it called not the medalla symphony it's the other one it's blue i've had a mental blank the heat is getting into my brain but my beautiful friend tian at a mother's open book has offered to lend me her breast pump if i need it so um yeah it's definitely been something I've been thinking about and talking to a couple of people about. So it's exciting to be able to hopefully create food for my baby. I'm going into it realistically and as wonderful as it would be, I understand it may not work. I feel like I will be a little bit crushed if it doesn't, but, um, you know, like I said, fed baby is best and... Whatever will be, will be. I'm just going to go with it and hope for the best. Is there a limitation to the number of times you can try surrogacy? I really hope you get pregnant on your first try, but if not, how many times can you try the implantation? Again, I think this really comes down to what the surrogate is prepared to do and how many transfers she's prepared to do and how much money people are prepared to spend and how many embryos you have, you know, we only have two PGS tested, we have two other embryos that are frozen that are unknown, we don't, they were unable to be tested, so they may have chromosomal abnormality, abnormalities, we don't know, they may be perfectly fine, um, so yeah, I think that's something we'll discuss as a group uh, if we have to, if we reach that point, uh, hopefully we don't, like I said, but, um, 
Yeah, I don't think there's a limitation on how many transfers you can do. Do you plan to write any more books? For those of you who don't know, I've recently created and published a children's book called Little Dream and it's about a couple's journey towards trying to grow their family and it not working out as easily as they had hoped. I would love to write another book. I really enjoyed the process and I felt like it was such a creative outlet and distraction for all of the negative things going on in my life um, and just seeing and knowing how much Little Dream means to so many people around the world. It's been such a heartwarming process from the beginning to the end and it's continuing. I'm continuing to hear from people who are receiving their copy in the mail. Um, it's been such a beautiful and moving experience. I would love to write another book. Uh, I haven't started that process yet but who knows? It's definitely on the cards. I think that's all of the questions. I'm just flicking through. I took screenshots of the questions as they came in. Um, but yeah, I think that's all of them. Woohoo! If you have any other questions, leave them down below. Tomorrow, Tim and I have our last counselling session at our fertility clinic and the four of us will be going to meet our possible future obstetrician. Um, he specialises in high risk and premature birth and um, will be able to answer all of our questions and concerns. Um, yeah, it'll be good to be able to have a chat with him uh, and hopefully all goes well and we all feel good after that appointment. Um, Thursday Tim and I have our lawyer appointment and then on Friday our friends have their lawyer appointment and their last counselling session at the fertility clinic. We've then got to wait for all of the reports to be sent to us uh, and then we'll be able to submit the application to the patient review panel. Hopefully we'll hear from them with a hearing date uh, within a couple of weeks. I'm not sure how long that'll take to be honest but um, hopefully we'll get a hearing date booked in in February and then get approved shortly after. Um, and who knows, we may be doing a transfer in March or April. We'll see what happens. But um, that's where we're at at the moment. I hope this year is kind to all of you. I know when a new year arrives, you do feel kind of like it's a clean slate and a renewed sense of energy maybe and um, hope. Sometimes, some years I haven't felt that, but I just hope that this year brings lots of miracles to you all because I know how hard it is living in the wait. It is awful. My heart's with you all. Love and baby dust, and I will speak to you guys soon with an update on how this week goes. Bye, guys. Whatever they call us, whatever they'll do, they're running in circles. Whatever they call us